Ever since the Raspberry Pi was introduced, I've been wanting to use it for something. Sadly though, I never got around to it, but now that I'm doing projects here on YouTube, I've decided it's finally time to get started. I had a first generation Raspberry Pi sitting around collecting dust, but decided I should go ahead and get the latest model. It's faster and the onboard Wi-Fi will come in handy. You can buy a Raspberry Pi from numerous online stores, as well as some brick and mortar places. Your options don't stop there though. In addition to buying the Pi, you can also get it bundled into numerous types of kits. These range from just the Raspberry Pi and power supply, all the way up to kits that come with a case, heat sinks, cables, breadboards, LEDs, and other items to let you start experimenting. I made my purchasing decision based on what items I could have with Amazon Prime's same day delivery. This means I bought this Kana kit bundle with the Raspberry Pi 3B+, some little heat sinks, and a power supply. Additionally, I bought a 32 gig micro SD card and a case with easy access to the GPIO pins. Once again, I am working on an anti-static mat and have a grounding strap attached to my wrist. First, I will place the Raspberry Pi into the case. It just snaps into place. Next, I will add the heat sinks. Even though the Raspberry Pi is fairly stable in the case, I'm going to use the screws to secure it better. Some little rubber feet were included, so now I will add those to the bottom of the case. Let's take a closer look at what is on the Raspberry Pi. There are four USB 2.0 ports and Gigabit Ethernet. There's an audio jack, full-size HDMI port, and a micro USB power connection. The micro SD card with the operating system goes into this slot. This is the 40-pin GPIO header. CSI camera port, DSI display port. Here's how you connect the power and insert the micro SD card. There are multiple ways to install an operating system onto the Raspberry Pi. I'll be using the Noobs installer. Noobs comes in two flavors, a full version for offline and network installs, as well as a light version for network only installs. If you are using a smaller capacity card, you probably want to use Noobs Lite. I will be performing both installation methods on separate micro SD cards to show you how each method works. First we will begin with the full Noobs version download. While that is downloading, we need to format the micro SD card. We do so by downloading the SD4 batter software from the SD Association's website. Now install the SD4 matter software onto your computer. Then we will run the program to format the SD card. When the noobs download is complete, extract the files from the archive and copy them to the newly formatted microSD card. Once the files have been copied, eject the microSD card, insert it into the Raspberry Pi, and connect power. As the Raspberry Pi boots up, you should see this rainbow screen and then the Noobs Installer menu. Select the Raspbian option, change your language, and begin the install. If you'd like to know how to do a network installation, I will show you later in this video I'm performing a Noobs Lite install. Once installed, click to reboot. After the Raspberry Pi reboots, we enter the Raspbian desktop environment. 
You may prefer to do a network installation, or perhaps you would like to choose the Raspbian Lite operating system because you don't need a desktop computing environment. Much of the process is the same. I formatted a second micro SD card and downloaded Noobs Lite instead. After the files have downloaded, I again copied them to the micro SD card, ejected it, inserted it into the Raspberry Pi, and connected power. In order to do network installation, I need to connect the Raspberry Pi via Ethernet or connect it to my wireless access point. Now that the Raspberry Pi has internet access, I am shown a list of operating systems that I can install. This time I selected Raspbian Lite, which will give me a command line only environment. Once installed, click to reboot. The default username is Pi, and the password is Raspberry, all lowercase. Wi-Fi is disabled by default as you need to set the country code. Type sudo raspy-config to edit the settings. Go down to option 4, then down to change Wi-Fi country. Select your country from the list and then select OK. While here, look through the various menu items to make any other changes necessary. You will probably want to at least change the user password and set your time zone. Once you've made all the changes, go down and select finish. Now that the Raspberry Pi is set up, I can start experimenting with it. I have several ideas in mind that I'm eager to start exploring with this inexpensive little computer. There are links in the description below to purchase your own Raspberry Pi, and to some of the websites I used in this video that will help you get started. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Well, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, and be sure to subscribe for more.